Do you know how to use a flaring tool? If you don't know how to use a flaring tool today, I'm going to teach you how to use two different types of flaring tools. One's super fast and pretty simple, and the other one's just simple. So if you're ready to learn about flaring and you're ready to make your first flare or maybe purchase a tool like this, then stay tuned for today's video. Before we start this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want to help with your project, you want tech support, you want to be able to call me, join, become a member. I've got members only videos. If you want to check those out and become a level three member, if you want more videos like this to teach you about HVAC, being a technician in the field, I've got a playlist. It's HVAC Tips for Technicians. Links in the description. Go check out those videos. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and let's get started. So what is a flare? A flare is an enlargement at the end of a piece of tubing by which the tubing is connected to a threaded fitting using a flare nut. The first flaring tool that I want to describe to you and cover is the most common flaring tool that you'll find in the field. This is the split flaring bl block that opens so that you can put the tube inside of the block for whatever size copper tubing that you're flaring. These are the wing nuts and this is what tightens down the block to hold that tube while you take the yoke, which is this part right here. This is the yoke. This is the flaring cone. This is what you center over your tube. Once you put your tube through the fl split flaring block, this is what you center over the tube. This is the handle that's connected to the yoke and then you have your flaring screw, okay? So you would take and you would screw that down. It would center, it would go into the tube and then it would make your flare. Not too tight, not too loose. Just the right amount of pressure will make the perfect flare. This is a very common flaring tool. Next flaring tool that I want to cover is made by spin, okay? And this you use with a drill. Now these are the bits and this will do quarter inch, I think all the way up to five eighths, I think three quarter actually. I'm going to show you how to use both of these tools today. Mini splits are very common in the industry now. They're installed quite a bit and sometimes I have to reflare the new copper line sets that I'm installing because the line sets don't always come with the best factory flares. Sometimes the wall will be too thin because it was pressed too hard when they did the flaring process. They used a block, probably a split flaring block, and they uh, pressed too hard with the flaring cone and it made the wall really thin. Sometimes you'll see a crack in the wall because it's too thin or pressed too hard. And most of the time we do just for good practice before we install line sets for a mini split, we'll inspect it and then most of the time we'll just cut the tubing and we'll just reflare it just so that we don't have any issues. But sometimes you have to reflare even uh, tubing that you get that's already that already has a flare on it. Before we use the flaring tool, we're going to take this old flare and we're going to cut it off with these tubing cutters. This right here is a tubing cutter and this is the cutting wheel and the rollers. And then right here on the back, you have a fold out deburring tool. And this is something you'll need to use to remove all the burrs after you cut your copper before you make your flare. Okay, so take this and tighten it down. And then, boom, look at that. Now take the deburring tool here and just take and move it around and the reason you want to do this is because this will make it a lot easier for you to use the flaring tool to make sure that you get the best flare this right here is the fold away reamer blade and that's what you saw on my tubing cutter this is a handy deburring tool that i use as well it's got a handle and then there is a blade that goes in the end and it's really nice for making a very clean piece of copper before you flare. This is another type of deburring tool that I use. And now that we've got this piece of copper ready to do our flare, we're going to use the spin tool first because that's the fastest way to get this flare. Today we're making a single flare, but there are such things as double flares. A single flare is a flare that is made of one layer of single thickness of tubing. And most flares are made at a 45 degree angle. All right, now that we've got the right size bit for that 5 8 tubing, 
we're gonna take and put this in the drill and you can see there's a couple lines. You may need some gloves because when you start to use this flaring tool, this copper tubing becomes very hot. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take and put the bit inside the tubing like this or up to it and then you're gonna to wanna to pull the trigger and as you pull the trigger, you're going to push inward and as you do that, then it's gonna make the flare, okay? So take and hold the copper down here if you don't have gloves and definitely do have gloves when you use the spin flare tool. Two, three, four, five. Usually count to about five. It's flared out. Once you tighten the flare nut down on your fitting, then that is going to flare this out the way it needs to be. This right here is what a typical flare nut looks like, which you saw, and it's made of forged brass, okay? It's drop forged brass. I wanted you to know that. Now that we use the spin flaring tool to make our flare, now we're gonna take the nut and we can screw our fitting on. And then you'll want to tighten this down and whenever you tighten it down, it's going to uh, flare this out. You do not have to use a deburring or reaming tool before you use the spin flare tool. But you do have to screw the flare nut onto the fitting, the threaded fitting, so that you can make sure that you form the perfect angle for your flare to seal properly. Whenever you use a spin flare tool, you create about a 40 degree angle. Whenever you tighten the flare nut down on the threaded fitting, you're going to create the angle that you need for a perfect seal. Okay? So, perfect. This is how you use the spin flaring tool. This looks similar to the flaring tool that we're using. Now we're going to use the Ritchie flaring tool. And we're going to be using the 5 8 So this is on the end here. We're gonna take and put the tubing inside of the split flaring block and it's going to come out the beveled edge side. And then once you have the depth right, you're gonna tighten the wing nut, okay? You'll know if you have too much or not enough because whenever you take and start the flaring process, it'll either be so wide that your flaring nut won't go over the flare. And that's if you have too much. And then if you don't have enough, then it's just gonna, uh, it's not, it's gonna tight, you're gonna tighten the nut down and then you're gonna be able to just pull the tubing right out of it, okay? So too much pipe through is going to make it to where you cannot actually take your flare nut and put it over that flare. And then if you don't have enough through the flaring block, then once you tighten down your nut, on your threaded fitting, then you'll be able to actually take your tube out because you didn't have enough actually going through the flaring block. All right, what do we do next? We take the yoke and we put it on the flaring block and then we bring it over to where it's in line with our tubing and then we turn the flaring block to lock it. And once we know that it's centered over the tubing, then we adjust our handle clockwise to tighten and then counterclockwise to loosen. All right, so now that I've got this ready, make sure your wing nuts are nice and tight. Once they're nice and tight, then you just take and Doesn't take much. All right. Now back it off. Doesn't take long at all. See how that looks? Looks like I got a little too much in there, didn't I? But that's okay. Let's see if the flare nut goes over. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now I want you to see the difference in what the spin flare tool and the Ritchie tool does. Okay, you see how that flare is there, right? Okay, looks okay. All right, and then 
It looks like I should have done a better job on the reaming, the deburring. And you can see this flare. All right. So. All right. If you're interested in either one of those tools that I use to make a flare, then check out the link in the description. You can purchase either the Spin Flare Tool or the Richie Flare Tool for around $100. So it's pretty affordable and it's a great tool if you need to make a flare. So we were making a single flare, but I want you to know there are double flares. And double flares are stronger than single flares and they rarely cause problems if you know they're made the correct way and double flares are formed with special tools. If you want more information about flaring, check out the Modern Refrigeration and Air Conditioning book. This is a good book that I used when I was in school to learn HVAC. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you learned something, let me know what you learned. If you need help with your project, you need tech support, you need contact with me, click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments, say I joined. I'll give you my email and that'll lead to contact with me. Thanks for watching. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.